What's up guys? So in a recent video we took a look at refurbishing an old gaming PC. As part of that refurb we actually removed this cooler. Now the cooler itself is absolutely filthy and is a little bit janky and we replaced it with something much more modern in the form of an AIO. After a bit of more inspection of this cooler though it turns out it's not too bad. Apart from the dirt and the fan we've got a pretty decent cooler on our hands. So today we decided to show you how you can actually refurbish a cooler just like this and also give it a bit of an upgrade. So this cooler isn't actually too bad. It is a bit dirty, it's a bit janky, but it's an actual pretty decent cooler. We've got a through and through six heat pipe cooler with a copper base and a great big fin system on top, so it will actually perform really well. But there's a couple of things that are wrong with it. Obviously, it's filthy. The fan system is a bit janky and the springs have pretty much lost all kind of spring now so the fan just drops and clearly a cooler that was actually designed for two fans has only got one so we're missing clips we're actually the clips that they've got are actually pretty crap uh, and the cabling is all filthy the fan is pretty much done with and it's a little bit dirty but these are not things that we can't fix now the first thing we need to do is actually clean up the cover itself and to do that I'm going to actually remove this fan altogether. Now I'm not going to bother cleaning this fan because you should change your fans anyway regularly. We're just going to end up recycling this one away and getting rid of it to be honest as well as the clips as well. The cooler though it is pretty filthy and it's quite blocked up. There's actually quite a lot of dust in it and there's obviously not going to be any air that's going to be able to get through there, or at least a little anyway. So we're going to have to clean that out. Now, usually we would just blow these out with some kind of air, but I don't want the dust in the studio. So instead, we're going to use our brush system, just like we did on the previous system. And we're just going to brush all this dust away and then probably give it a bit of a spray with some kind of brake cleaner. Now, in terms of brushing out the dust, I just use a normal dry paintbrush and just basically just get all the dust out of it like that. And as you can see, this is the kind of stuff that you would be breathing in that your system is taken in and there is a lot of it. It's as if this cooler has never actually been cleaned and it probably hasn't since it was put in the system. But we'll keep going and we'll get all the dust that we can off so that we can get some air through this. Now that we've got the cooler completely cleaned, we need to actually install some new fans. Now to do that, you can decide to use any kind of fans that you want. This one will actually take 120 millimeter fans and we decided to opt for these. Now these are the Arctic P12 PST versions and they are a PWM setting, but they are, the PST means that they actually link together. So we won't have to kind of install any other hub. We can just connect them straight to a single header. We've actually picked up two, although we're gonna go through two methods of doing this. One, where you can actually replace the single fan and two, adding the two fans even though we don't have the clips for it. To install the fans you can use a number of different things. What we like to opt for is actually a cable tie system. Now there's many people out there that do use cable ties to do this but I tend to find they make a bit of a mess. I like to hide the cable ties as much as possible while also allowing them to hold those fans on as tightly as they can. So first we'll show you how we do it when we want to install one. Now I generally like to use these types of fans because they have the gap in the middle and this allows us to actually hide the cable ties quite well. Although you can just put them through this whole thing just like that and they will hold in but you will see the ends on the outside of the fan. I don't like doing that but we'll show you how to actually hide it a little bit better soon. Obviously for one fan what we need to do is install it into the side of the cooler blowing through so it goes to the back. And if we look at the actual cooler itself, it comes with these two ridges where the fan sits between. So we want to install the cooler to make sure that it fits between those two. That will actually stop it from going side to side. Now to install this, what we like to actually do, and we'll look at the top of it, is actually feed a cable tie through the back. And in between the fin stack, so it comes out of here, do the same again to the other side. Through the fin stack and then install the fan onto the other side, pulling the cable tie through. And you want to do this for all four. So it starts to look like that. Then we can install the same again onto the bottom, through the bottom making sure that these heads of these actually face the same way. And the reason we do that is because we want to feed an additional cable tie through 
to hold it all into place. Now once we actually have these in place like this, what we can do is simply install another cable tie through the back, clicking it all the way up through the next one. And then what we don't want it to do is actually pull these tight. So we just want to hold these into place and pull the cable tie up just like that. Now this will actually act as if there's another fan on the back and we can simply snip the end off just like that. For the other side, we can do something similar, but we don't actually want to put a cable tie all the way through. What we want to do is feed a cable tie onto the end, push it into place, just like that, and then snip the two ends off, just like that. Now, if we do that all the way around, we will find that this will actually hold pretty well. We can snip the tops off these first if they don't fit in and then simply push the little clipper down onto the fan base just like that and snip it out. Now that's just the one side of the fan but as we can see it doesn't move and it's actually clipped on quite well and it's going to be quite hidden when it's in the system. Now when we come to do two fans, obviously we want a push-pull configuration. The front fan here will actually push, so we want the blades facing forward and they will go on like that, making sure the cable is roughly at the bottom. So I'm going to flip that fan around just like that, move that cable out of the way. And to install this, we want to go actually the other way. So what we'll do is we will actually feed a cable ties through the back of here actually turn them around a little bit through each corner of the fan and we will go from the inside like that and then we will insert the fan and the cables straight through the fins on the heatsink so we will go through there Make sure the cables are the right way around, straight in and through. Now obviously we want the bottom ones to do this as well. So we'll go straight through just like that. And also on the back. Once these are actually going through the cooler, pull them in from the other side. We can pretty much now flip the cooler on its front because we don't have them sticking out pegs and we've got all the fins coming out. Make sure we've aligned the cooler into the middle between the two pegs and then the second fan we want to install on the back. Now obviously this needs to actually be mounted the same way and we want the frame actually facing out because it will push and pull through and we want to feed these through the backs as well. Now you can go all the way through as I've said before, but I like to go halfway because it hides the actual cable ties. It's a little bit easier the other way, particularly when you're adding the ends on, but for now we want to do this super clean. Line this fan up to where it's got to be as well. Make sure the cabling is all in about the right place, which is about there. And then using these ends, again, we can cut these off first if it makes it easier. So we've just got the end and we want to stick these onto the cable and then pull them down to the fan, just like that. And then we just repeat that for each corner. Once they're all fed all the way through, we just snip the tops off of the cables, make sure they're nice and tight and they're not going to go anywhere. And as we can see, we now have the two fans installed without any crazy cable ties all over the place. They're actually a pretty clean design. The fans are not going anywhere. They're pretty stable. They won't move. They won't rock and they are going to produce an awesome airflow altogether. And that is actually pretty much it. We have the two fans on the ends. They're really stable, really strong, and they're not going anywhere. And we can just completely ditch the old system, 
get rid of it. It's all dirty, it's manky, the springs don't even work that well, so we can ditch that and chuck that away. This cooler will now actually perform super awesomely because these fans are designed for pressure, so we're going to get a good airflow all the way through. The actual PST part of the uh, Arctic fan system allows us to actually connect them together just like this, and then we can simply just plug one of them, this one, straight onto the header and we're good to go. So we can just feed those cables through. One thing to remember while doing this is that sometimes the actual base of the cooler itself will need to be mounted to the board first. So you will actually have to do that kind of modification with the cable ties while it's actually on the board because you can only fit the fans later. I believe on this one, the panel actually goes underneath here and the screws are actually underneath the fans. So for this one, I will have to take this apart and do it again differently. But that's actually how you do this, and it's given a really clean design. Now, I hope this video has helped somebody with adding more fans, if not adding a new fan to a system that may already be broken, and increase the performance of your cooler. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Don't forget to drop us a like if it's helped you out, and we'll catch you in the next one.